Nancy Pelosi is up for Speaker of the House again, and that's not surprising. Obviously, Democrats won the elections and now will run the House. And and in the beginning, there was challenges from the left, or there was murmurs of challenges that has unfortunately quieted down a little bit. I actually think she should definitely be aggressively challenged from the left. Unfortunately, she's being challenged from the right wing in the Democratic Party. I'll get to that in a second. But the donors didn't like any of this stuff. Now, when asked why she considers herself a master legislator, which is what she called herself, Nancy Pelosi said because she raises the most money. So her friends in the donor community have stood up for her. A number of them wrote a letter, made it public, and this is what they wrote in the letter. We understand and respect the fact that you are all much better informed about your internal deliberations than any of us, they tell the Democrats in the House. That this is your matter to decide, that is as it should be. In other words, it's not your matter to decide, we're the donors and you better do as you're told, otherwise you won't get money from us. So that's the beginning, but they spell it out even more clearly as we go along. They said, because of her diligence, her powers of persuasion, her enormous effectiveness, and her adherence to our values, we have provided a portion of the financial resources required to be competitive, cycle after cycle. They continue, when it came to funding this recent effort to retake the majority, Would we have contributed anywhere near as much as we did if Nancy was not the leader? We think not. Can I can I jump in for a second? I just wonder if Ben Shapiro has seen this letter. Mm -hmm. And maybe maybe it'll resonate with him because it's not about Republicans, it's about Democrats. Because in your debate with Ben Shapiro last year at Politicon, he denied that money actually influences politicians. He does he really minimized the impact of money in politics. Here is a very transparent and public letter letting Democrats know, hey, we paid for this. Yeah, and would we have given as much if our corrupt leader in chief was not in charge? <laughs> we think not. I declare we think not. Right? And by the way, Republicans. Uh, what, why do you think Soros is giving money? You think Soros is giving money to influence politicians. What do you think the Republican donors are giving it for? To influence politicians, they do it on both sides. And here we are, we're being honest and fair and criticizing Nancy Pelosi and the Democrats and their donors. And they, uh, they go on to say, but we do believe the competence and effectiveness of the leader is a critical component in motivating us to reach in our pockets. Oh, look. I happen to think the Democratic donors overall do mean well, and the reason I say that is because they're not arguing to lower their own taxes. In a lot of cases, they're arguing to increase their own taxes. And so it's not personal financial gain necessarily, although in some cases it is, when the big banks and the corporations, etc., give to them. So I'm not blaming the people who wrote this letter in particular, but I'm telling you, this reads like elitism and corruption. And the reason the country doesn't love Nancy Pelosi is not because she's too liberal, it's because they think she's too elitist. And this proves their case. Let me jump in. Look, I don't know who these specific donors are, but I just want to remind you guys that Jamie Dimon, who is the head of JP Morgan Chase, considers himself a Democrat, right? So there are certainly Democrats who side with Republicans when it comes to deregulation, when it comes to tax cuts. And then when it comes to things like social issues, they will, you know, they'll say that they're liberal. I mean, the same thing is happening at Silicon Valley. Those Silicon Valley CEOs aren't actually progressives or liberals. They might be when it comes to social issues, but certainly not. Uh, the case when it comes to regulation and taxes. Now, there are some progressive heroes in Congress. Uh, I'm gonna get to them in one second. But one last thing about the right wingers that are challenging Pelosi. Uh, There's a a different group of 16 that are more right wing. And then now there's a new group of nine Democrats from the quote unquote problem solvers caucus. And they threaten to withhold the support for Pelosi until she agrees to a list of demands that includes house rule changes that could potentially allow for more bipartisan legislation to pass. Now, everybody on TV will applaud that. That is a terrible idea. Why, because we want more extremism? No, bipartisan agreement in Washington means a small group of Democrats joining a larger group of Republicans and outvoting the rest of the Democrats to make sure the rich donors get everything that they want. What did the Democrats take the House back for? For that? No, no, we say no. But the problem is, look, progressives have to fight for each other and they have to stand up for each other. They should be challenging Pelosi from the left. All she's doing is giving concessions to right wing corporate Democrats. 
the progressives are getting no concessions. We have to have our own leaders in there. Now, luckily, there's a couple that are running. Barbara Lee is wonderful. She's running for chair of the House Democratic Conference. And how do you like this for justice? That is the position Joe Crowley used to have. He no longer has it because he's defeated by Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Barbara Lee is among the most progressive people in Congress. Lee, as David Weigel in Washington Post points out, has often been at the far left of the congressional party. Famously, she was the only member of Congress to vote against authorization of military force after the terrorist attacks of September 11, 2001. She saw the endless occupation of Afghanistan and Iraq coming from a mile away, and she was absolutely right. She should be the chair of the House Democratic Conference. If they vote against her, it's a slap in the face of all progressives who put those people in power in the first place. And then finally, maybe most importantly, I know it's a uh, position that doesn't get a lot of uh, talk, but Jamie Raskin is running for caucus leadership representative. What that is, is it represents all the uh, newer members of Congress, five terms or less. That is actually a majority of the caucus. That is where a lot of the progressives are. Jamie Raskin is among the most progressive uh, people in the country. If he doesn't win, the caucus leadership representative and represent the young, new, and they're not all young by age, but they're new into the House. Those folks, well, again, it's a message by the Democrats that they only care about corporations, they only care about power. Jamie Raskin takes no corporate PAC money, and he won anyway against millions of dollars. Jamie Raskin and Barbara Lee were not asking for too much. Those are just two positions out of a dozen for the Democratic leadership. They must be in leadership. If they're not, then we know which way the Democratic Party is going, and it is not the right direction. On the go? Don't worry, we got you covered. You can still listen to TYT at our new podcast network. Find us on Apple Podcasts, the Google Play Store, or at tyt.com slash podcast.